Welcome everyone to um, our mini conf again. This is our 11th year, and uh, hopefully, it's um, everyone's had, had fun and learnt some stuff. It'll just it'll be easy to see. Um, so I'm just sort of trying to try to cover the uh, software aspect of things, and it's a, a pretty large um, amount of, of top content to fill, and there's just no way I can possibly do that in half an hour. So basically, just try and uh, the idea is basically to get people to have some sense of what it, uh, is involved in uh, acquiring data, training, and uh, Mark will be helping with the uh, Google Caleb side of things, and then uh, and then actually self-driving. It's been really good to see a few people already getting, getting cars going around the track, which is which is nice. So. Um, so a bit, of, a bit of an overview, um, run through the three steps, uh, talk a little about what we're going to aim to do after the uh, mini-conf, and uh, then a bit of resources and thanks, which John's already covered. So the idea of the, uh, this mini-conf uh, all along has been to introduce hardware to software developers, um, as, as some of the techniques like, like soldering, diagnosing things when they go wrong, that sort of stuff. Uh, also, just the, the components of familiarity. I, um, what does it mean to have a, 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 a pulse uh, modulation signal, you know, drive a servo motor, or, um, or how do you flash a LED and so on, or, or drive an OLED display? Uh, we also try to anticipate emerging trends. So um, uh, when, when we started back in 2010, the, uh, the Arduino was pretty popular then, so it wasn't, that wasn't so, so hard to um, predict. But, uh, but that, that's had pretty big influence um, with uh, reaching a lot, much broader audience of um, artists, musicians, kids, um, doing amazing things with the uh, Arduino over the many years. But then things like the, uh, when the ESP8266 came out, um, uh, that, that chip um, in no way was um, obvious it was going to turn into something like the ESP32, which has become quite a powerhouse. You know, you've got now a lot of memory, a lot of, uh, a lot of horsepower, a lot of GPO, um, Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth. And it was just great to bring that chip early to, um, to the OHMC. And now um, there's been a bit of a trend around machine learning. So um, you're finding now things like TinyML and uh, having these small models that allows you to do things like watch words or do a little bit of... Um, image processing on very tiny, tiny um, machines. I think we'll see more of that um, uh, on much smaller machines than Raspberry Pi. So hopefully last year and this year, um, uh, introducing hardware and ML has been, been a good thing. Um, and then I hope this, this project, particularly this year, will act as a springboard for further exploration, that you won't just stop today, that you'll um, basically play with the, obviously, the, the Lego, you know, stick some servo motors on, on it, or um, uh, use it for other projects and just running a car around the track. Because um, what we found from last year is that no, not only everyone on our team or who we um, have interacted with um, cares about the cars. They're, you know, they're a bit of fun, but not for everyone. And also, it's, it takes a bit of effort to set up a track and go, go racing with friends. And so we wanted to basically have it so you just snap the module off and use it for other, other things. So, so the inspiration for this is um, a number of us have always been keen on, on robots and, um, and now a bit of machine learning. Over in the US, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they started a project called DI Robocars, where they basically... Um, uh, took these sort of small uh, scale uh, remote control cars. They realized that um, all you needed was just two PDWM signals to drive the steering and throttle, which can be done from a, a small computer like a Raspberry Pi, um, run, uh, get a video from a camera, and off, off you go. So they've been doing that in um, San Francisco, where each month about, oh well, now about 450 people turn up with 250 cars, and they're getting great, great track times. They're, they're, I think just recently, the last couple of months, got to the point where the car is driving around the track faster than a person can drive it. And you, and you look online, you see amazing video of them doing you know, drifting and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And the donkey car was, um, was a, a guy called uh, William Roscoe, and he, he basically had a project which was had sort of a, a GitHub repo, um, uh, some, some documentation. It, was fairly, uh, it wasn't too hard to follow, uh, follow and build, and uh, that became the donkey car project. It languished a bit about a year ago when we did the previous um, mini conf in New Zealand, um, but since then they basically got new contributors on it. Uh, new contributors, they've um, up improved the documentation. There's now seven ML models. They now support the Jetson Nano and things like that. So it's really had a big burst of life, and so it's really pretty, pretty timely. Even even commercial organisations have started paying attention and picking it up. So Nvidia and Amazon are two, for example. Uh, so this year, um, this is a significant upgrade to the project. So um, hopefully those who here last year would, would agree. Um, so we, had, we found there's a couple of issues, like um, things like you start these machines up, and, you know, what, what's their IP address, or what's going on, what's their battery voltage, what state the car is in. So adding an OLED um, is, is an obvious thing to do, and, and found a number of the team just add low OLEDs to all of their projects now, just so they can see what's going on on these tiny machines. Um, uh, we also want to improve the power um, on it, um, up to the point of being able to support a nano, a nano which um, John mentioned. And we want to make it more extensible, not just be something for, for cars. So as it, as it stands, the, um, the Dingo PCB is actually just a decent Raspberry Pi um, 
board. We've been thinking about the machine learning or the cars. So, so hopefully we'll develop that out through the year. Um, so we want to be able to extend mechanically. So I think uh, if you chat to Nicola afterwards, she'll um, happily show you Spider Gwen. So a little bit of Lego. I've you know, put some Lego on this one. Um, this, is, this, is just, this is obviously just static Lego Star Wars fun. But what is nice is you can get you know, mind storms and other things and um, uh, basically use uh, Aldite and glue Lego to the car or whatever and you know, hack into it. Get your craggle out, get your craggle on and have a good time with the Lego. Um, with electronics, there's, um, uh, as John's mentioned, there's um, you know, PWM and I2C. There's already a number of I2C devices on here for um, the ADC for battery monitoring. Um, uh, there's the, uh, as an IMU, so that's a three axis accelerometer, gyroscope, and a magnometer, and a, and a barometer. Um, what else is on there? Um, uh, oh, there's the, uh, of course, the PWM, because the Raspberry Pi has only got one decent hardware PWM channel, and we, we, we wanted more. So you can pretty much just go and get a standard uh, servo motor. Uh, here, here's one. And you basically just, can just, just, you know, just plug those straight into the board there and uh, have, have a good time. Yes, it is. Yeah, for, servos are f uh, uh, five to six volts. And how many amps do we get to? Uh, so this is the software talk. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's a it's a great it's a great, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, uh, and short answers, I don't know. But you, you wouldn't want to have eight motors on here and have them all, all go to stall. That might be a bit of a problem. But but you're not going to you're not going to hurt anything. But um, a couple of amps. Yeah, yeah. Just, but also. Also, how, 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 how thick are the tracks on the um, on the servo to the yeah. servo pads? Yeah. So no. So look. So for simple for simple applications, we're just driving a couple of servos for an arm stuff. That I think it'll be it'll be fine. But, um, but yeah, short answer. Short answer. We don't know. That, that, that little servo is like twenty five kilos. Yeah. And when it stalls, which makes me nervous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is that is that is that everywhere, or just just to the um, just to the power supply? The power supply, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I guess uh, uh, the BOF tomorrow, so that we can go into, into more detail. And the other is the, the soft, the soft uh, and extensibility of software is somewhat extensible. The donkey car has this notion of parts for all the, all the parts, like the, the camera, the, um, the controllers, and so on, all these, these, these um, sort of modular parts in Python. OK, and then um, the other thing we're keen to do is um, be able to support the, uh, the Jetson Nano. So NVIDIA. Uh, Unlike the rest of the Jetson series, which are a little bit all a little bit weird, so they did two nice things. One is they made the bus on the Jetson be the same as the Raspberry Pi, which is great. You just plug our board straight onto that. And the second is um, they're using a fairly standard Ubuntu now, so it's not as weird as it usually is. So um, yeah, so uh, what you find is um, when you when you start out putting um, something on a Raspberry Pi, you end up having to put um, you know, power supplies, uh, all, all, these little module, all these little module boards to uh, basically prototype, but then it gets a bit, bit messy. And I think, Mark, have you got your um, car here this week? No, no, I don't. Oh, I don't. Well, he, Mark's, got, Mark's got a fully going um, a hybrid of our last year's project, plus the Nano, plus a Beck, plus uh, an Adafruit board, plus whatever. And so what we want to do is basically have an, a really neat, really neat package that also could power the Nano. So um, we haven't fully um, tested it out yet, but, but fingers crossed it'll be fine. OK. So. So that was um, just a, a few quick photos. So that was the uh, 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 last year's project. We've basically gone from core flute to plywood, plus we've um, got a, the prototype car, um, dingo board on here, which I can show you later. Um, uh, we've all got a few ones for me with the, the module now, which is just standalone. Uh, that, uh, this one's got the LiPo connector on it. And Mark, Mark today has got, um, managed to get LiPos going. He was um, intent. So uh, Mark, he's, up, he's lost me. Yeah. Yeah, get, yeah. Oh, sorry. Mark, yeah, Mark Merlin. Sorry, you'll be able to um, demonstrate the lipo going, which is a pretty awesome effort. Um, we've seen that. That was a that was a Jetson Nano um, bolted onto last year's car, and that's that's the motor showed you, showed you then, and that's just running standalone off a, off a lipo. And and sadly, it's not um, the lipo charging support's not great yet, but the next next version surely will be. Okay, so. Uh, Let's get, let's get down to it. So the three steps are you've got to drive your car around acquiring data, which is this, the steering and the throttle values as, as you drive. You then um, will use um, Google Colab or your local laptop to train. And then you'll, then after that, you can move the model back to the car and hopefully all self-drive. Self so back to, back to training. So um, right, I'll just try logging into, into my... I'll start the machine up. So you should just be able to... Um, Disconnector, and after after about 15 seconds or so, um, 
a half a minute of, of boot up and we'll know it's IP address. Um, meanwhile, I'll just go this. Great, so it's, uh, got its IP address now. Is, uh, just double check that I'm on the um, on the right Wi-Fi. It's not coming up. It's IP address. Oh, well, fortunately, this display shows me it's um, it's come up on the conference. It's come up on the conference Wi-Fi rather than my phone. So I'll just uh, switch across the conference Wi-Fi. Great. One of those days. Is any of this working on the conference network? It was. I'll just start to start it again and see how it goes. Come on. All right, so the problem is the uh, car's come up on the conference Wi-Fi and um, my laptop's not coming up on the conference Wi-Fi properly. Hang on a sec. Just bear with me for a sec. You're probably banned from the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that happened to, that, that's true. That happened to me yesterday. And, um, hang on a sec. Uh, you can, if you can hold that, you can, just, you, can, yeah, can, you, just, you can just read out the address for me, please. It is uh, 135. 44.250.250.105. 138, sorry, yes. 138, okay, cool. One one thirty eight four forty four two fifty one oh five. Yeah. Woohoo! The, the display works. Thank goodness for that. Thanks, Mark. Okay, well, whilst that was a bit of a slowdown, um, that shows the display is actually useful. So it would have been really, <laughs> really, really hard otherwise. But even so, it's not it's not very um, impressive. Okay, so now, do I need to expand that out a bit and make it a little bit larger? Or, there we go. Okay, all right. Um, so this is the, uh, of the home directory of the, uh, on your Raspberry Pi, and the things to um, uh, care about are the directory OHMC. Um, hang on a sec. When, when you... Um, when you've installed the Donkey Car software, you can use a command called Donkey Car Create Car, and that, that creates a directory with, with, for your new car. And we've done that for you, and that's, the, that's what the OHMC directory is. And inside the OHMC directory, you'll see there's um, a, a, a file called um, myconfig.py. That's, that's interesting because that has the, um, 
the uh, PWM values for the, for the, cha for the two, ch two channels. So if I look at that very quickly, my config. Oh, let's, it's, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi connection is really dodgy, my config. Oh, thanks, guys, yeah, I, that's, that would help. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing like crowdsourcing your, um, your presentation. But the, the Wi-Fi, uh, the, the Wi-Fi is not helping. Oh, Should I stop streaming Netflix? If you like, <laughs> or we, okay. Yeah, I'm, I am typing and it's not, not, not doing anything. Okay, finally. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that's in the um, my config file. You can see there's um, the steering channel, which is PWM channel, channel one, and there's the, um, the highest and lowest PWM values. So what that basically is, when I say PWM, that's just the width of the pulse that goes from the, out to the servo motor. So it, uh, it's either um, narrow, which means you go all the way to the left, or, or wide, which means you go all, all the way to the right. And the same thing for, um, for throttle, you see is the, the throttle values. And so if your car's going too slow or too fast, you can adjust these throttle values. If you need to um, adjust the steering, you can adjust these values. That's that, that's that file. Um, there's also the um, the manage file, manage.py. This is the main the main uh, Python script you use to run things. So I'm just going to start that up now. Um, so let's go. Uh, let's just see. So if we can data. Wow, this is uh, typing. Nothing's happening. Here we go. Uh, so in the data directory, that's where that's where all your, all your um, video and uh, steering and, and throttle telemetry goes. And then once you've trained, your model will end up in the in the model model directory. I've got a I've got a bunch of models that I've trained over the over the last little while. So now it's just, uh, so to require data, you go Python manage.py drive. I'm just going to do this with using the, the joystick. Actually, yeah, yeah. Right. I thought I hit return on that. You can turn that on there, so it's, um, so it's, it's up here. There you go. Is that still running? Hey, finally getting it. So you can see it's uh, bringing up the camera, all the parts. Okay, so now it should be. So, yeah, great. Ready to roll? Great. So you can see when, so, when I use the throttle, see it's saying recording 10 records, 20 records. So that's recording frames at 10 or 20 seconds. So, so once, you've, once you've done that, I think basically you just take it for a little drive. So, um, so, it's, so as I'm driving around, it's recording um, steering the throttle values at 10, 10 or 20 frames a second. This is really bad driving, so it's not going to learn very much. So that. Yeah, now, now you know why cars drive so badly. No. So once you say, just hit go control C. Do it again. All right. And then in the in the data directory, you should find there's a new a new tub. So see this one called tub one with this date. And if you looked inside that directory, um, tub one. Uh, you see if you want to, yeah. You'll see that there's um. A whole lot of records. They, that's your, they're your steering and um, actually steering and throttle values, and there's a whole lot of um, uh, JPEGs. So that's that's your training data. So um, let's just see. So Mark, should we get the um, do the colab thing now? All right. So I'm just going to see the data. I'm just unpacking some some data I trained previously. Actually, no, we, we're, going to, we're going to move up the 2GZ file, aren't we? All I'll yep. do is yep. I'll just run through. Okay, great. Just talk through oh, cool. it and then people can... Okay. Run it. Right. So it was a little bit, that was a little bit, of, um, a little bit messy, but hopefully that gives you a sense of how you acquire data. You basically um, SSH, SSH into your car, once you found the IP address, you then uh, run, run the uh, CD to the OHMC car directory, you run python manage.py.drive, uh, drive your car around, and um, depending upon whether you've got a, an iPhone or an Android, you might, you, know, you might be able to use the web browser. Um, you can use the web browser on your desktop, or, um, or you can use a PlayStation controller. You, uh, you'll drive your car for about, um, about six or seven times clockwise, and six or seven times anti-clockwise, so it gets enough um, data in terms of left and right. The, be the better you drive, the better the car will learn. So basically, just take your time, drive it slowly, and stay within the, 
within the tracks. Um, you know, just practice a few times, and, and the better, it's, it's really true of all machine learning. The better the data, the better the, the predictions. And so uh, you do that for about um, about 5,000 records. Yes, Mike? Does it matter the speed that you actually drive the car as part of the training? Um, yes and no. When, you, when you've, when you've train, trained your car, so the question is about does the speed matter? So when you train your car, you can run it in two, two modes. You basically run it where it's only looking after the steering or it's looking after the steering and the throttle. So when you, when you first um, train, don't worry too much about how fast you drive because when you, when you, uh, sorry, when you acquire data, because when you um, run the model, you just turn it to steering only and you can control the throttle. And then once you sort of get a little bit more co uh, confident better at driving, you can then dri uh, drive around on, uh, with a, a good speed and then the car will basically use your speed as an indicator for how it drives and then it does, it does matter. The, yeah, so if you, so if you get basically kangaroo hop as you're, you're driving, that's what it will learn. So what, I, so what I do is I put the car into a constant throttle so it's driving uh, around itself at a constant speed so I can just worry about the steering. Anyway, so, it's, um, so now we'll um, go do the co Google Colab thing. So let's see, so um, get out of that. Um, bring the browser up here. So, Right, so in, in the um, software instructions, it'll, it'll um, point you to this URL for the Colab. So is that enough for you, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Okay, over there? Cool. I can... Uh... I'll just stand next to you. No, no, you can steal. steal, steal. Yeah, the... Yeah, so the, the main thing here is... Um, Okay, so uh, who here has used a Python notebook before for machine learning or something like that? Yeah, there's a few people around. Basically, this service is provided by Google for free, um, and it enables you to kind of avoid having to set up the plethora of tools on your machine required to set up TensorFlow and a variety of other stuff. The main, the main couple of tools that you really, really, uh, or can be quite difficult to set up are around the video processing and the image processing, which is a, a library called OpenCV. So what this particular service allows you to do is it allows you to upload your data to a, a Google Drive and then um, basically pull that drive into a free virtual machine and then run your training with the software already pre-configured. And what someone's done, and I've augmented, is someone has set up a, a um, workbook for training with Donkey Car. We've linked to that workbook in the software guide. And basically you get this walkthrough sort of, uh, it's kind of like a bash script that you can, or a Python script that you can kind of step through. Um, it has a couple of different parts. There are sections which are designated documentation, uh, and then there are sections where you actually run that code. So basically what's going to happen when you start this workbook is it's literally going to load up a VM for you and give you access to a GPU. Um, so on my laptop, on my normal uh, uh, Linux-based laptop, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes to train. On this service, it only takes me about a minute to train. So it makes a big difference when you're cycling through training runs, especially if you're working out how to drive. Um, and then really, uh, uh, the process is you just literally step through this workbook element by element, and there are instructions in the workbook on how to create folders in your uh, um, Google Drive and then copy the files across. If you don't want to put data on Google Drive, you can upload it to a web server and then just wget it or curl it down from there in the workbook. Um, uh, but it's like I encourage people to have a bit of a run through of the, of the documentation, especially while we're around at the conference um, uh, and, and just basically walk through doing a training run. So the main things here is because we're setting up a very specific our version of TensorFlow. Uh, we basically 
we configure it so that it's got the right version and stuff and matches your car. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have any questions or anything like that, bail us up. Um, and the main thing that you want to have a bit of a look at is down here where you're uploading data and manipulating it. But if, you, if you've got any questions while we're floating around, just give us a yell. I can run you through a couple of examples. Um, and you know, it, it is pretty simple and there's a lot of good documentation around for it. Cool? I, I, I could, I could do it on my laptop, but. <laughs> That's why I bow to you. Yeah, so um, if you haven't seen this app before, there's a, a lot of stuff there that looks like gobbledygook, and we are very happy to take you, take you through that because um, it, is actually easy, it is actually easier than it looks. Another thing also is um, this year we've, we've, um, we've punted on getting your um, laptop set up because um, uh, there's so many different laptops so it's really hard to get everyone through it. But if you do want to get do local processing, also come and chat to us and we'll help you with that too. But, um, yeah, but I don't know, a minute training versus 20 minutes or half an hour on your laptop, yeah. Okay, back to the presentation. Okay, so um, so after acquiring day, you've trained it. So then, what you do is you'll be moving a model that's been trained on Google Colab back to your, back to your laptop, and then you can run this command uh, Python manage py drive, and this time you give it the the um, model. And so let's um, let's just try that. So back, oh, the car's still here, patient is it? Patiently waiting for us. Great. So. Um, Go Python um, manage drive. Um, Python model. What's that? Um, one dot h five. Oops. That's coming up now. When you, um, this time when you start up the uh, manage.python script with a model, it just takes longer because it's loading a, a three megabyte model into the, into, the, into the car, so it takes a bit longer. Now, uh, let's see, let's see if this is gonna work. I was hoping you might find the IP address, but it's probably not going to. Okay. So background if config um, double nine zero, I think it is. Cool. Let's grab that IP address. Go back in the foreground. Here. Wow, well, that came up. Yeah, lousy typing. Here we go. So that's the that's the view from the camera. That's how you look to um, the robot overlords. And uh, and uh, what I can now do is I can now put it into um, local angle, which is uh, just means it's now it's now steering itself. And uh, a simple a simple way of testing is just to just put it on the track and just push it along from behind. You know, and it should that's, that's off it's going like that. And uh, I think I think I've turned the ESC is still turned on, and I'm just use the I key, and that you can see it's now increasing the throttle a bit. Ah, except I've got the um, I think Mark turned the speed control off, so it didn't run away on me. Ah, that's it. Here we go. And now if we basically just increase the I key a bit, it should now just take off along the floor. There you go. So it's now just driving around the track. So that's 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 it in a nutshell. But one so one other thing I'd really like to show everyone because um, it really helps understand what's going on is um, right, just uh, just going to kill the car now. Get out of it. Um, see the data. There's a right. Open um, model one. Uh, 12 MP4. 
So one of the, one of the questions well, that really comes up is, you know, why is my car driving so well? Or more likely, why is my car driving so poorly? And uh, the, two, the two challenges, and a bit of future, the two challenges are, one is um, the machine does not see how we see. So we look at that and it's obvious where the track is or what it should be doing, but the, the machine um, uh, has, a, so it's coming at a low angle, there could be low speculative light, reflection of sunlight, all, all sorts of things. The, um, and, uh, and, that's, that's, and also, it's not necessarily just focusing on the lines. And so what this, uh, is what's called a silency map or movie does is it shows you what the car's actually focusing on. So the first thing you notice is a, a, a blue and a green line. The green line was the, the, the vector for when not the actual steering. So which direction was I steering and what was the throttle value? So a longer line means more throttle. And the blue, the blue line is the, is the predicted, what the machine is trying to, to do. So how this works is you take the, tra the, the training data that you use, so the video and the steering, you train the model, and you use, also use the model, so it can run, it can check the model against the, the train data, and it produces this video. And, and also, what it's doing is putting false color for for, what, for the features or the pixels that, that um, are most affecting the steering and throttling, throttle values. And so you can see here, it's like um, the white lines are being highlighted in, in red and blue, um, which is good. But you also see a lot of other noise. So these are other features in the image. And so when we've been training around our hacker space, we often find chair legs and doors and machines are, it's actually picking up on that, which you, you, know, you wouldn't uh, naturally expect. So hopefully, so hopefully that's um, a useful tool to see what's going on. I'll just uh, get out of that now. So, um, so the way we uh, bring that up is there's a, uh, let's see here it is. Oops. Here it is. Okay, so there's a command called uh, donkey make, make movie, and you basically give it the, the tub of the, uh, your data, you give it the model, and, uh, and it produces a, a file called tubmovie.mp4, which you can then play and have a look at. And it shows us uh, the actual versus predicted values, plus uh, what pixels and features are most influencing the machine's decisions. So just to quickly wrap up, um, uh, last year was the first time we actually had our project continue on after the OHMC. It was something we've wanted to do for many years, and uh, this one we kept going through the year with a lot of help from, every, um, from a lot of people. Um, and we, uh, I hope, anticipate the same thing happens this year after so much time and effort. Um, so this week, um, please come and chat to any of us about um, any help you need in getting, uh, in getting a, uh, the best out of your car. Um, tomorrow, after, uh, tomorrow at lunchtime in this room we'll be having a boff, and so hey, please come to that. Um, there's a, the email group. We're going to have to help a link. Uh, stay here. They'll, they'll survive the open documentation mini comp, so I hope so. And I've got more tapes, so I can lay out some more tracks. Um, uh, this one's a little hard to train on because it's a little bit narrow. Uh, uh, there's an e there's a email group that's been going for 11 years now. Um, we'll, uh, we put it, we, we gave a link in the welcome. Um, mail that John sent out, but it seems that Google have changed their policies, so it's hard to try and fix that, figure that out. There's a Slack, a Slack team, so just uh, ask myself or John Spencer if you'd like to be on that. Um, there's the GitHub repo, and we'll, just, we'll basically just keep this going. Um, the resources are the Open Harbor Mini Conf page, of course. There's a, a GitHub repo, and the inspiration of this uh, work has come from the Donkey Car um, web page and repo and the DI Robo Cars. I'll put, I'll put the slides up so um, you can get those. And if I ask, you know, to reiterate what John Spencer said, I'd like to thank, uh, thank all the team. Uh, insane amount of effort. Like, it's so extraordinary. Um, you know, not just when things are going well, but also when things get, uh, get hard, everyone rallies together. Um, thanks to all our alum alumni and uh, helpers. We, today would have just been a non, a non start without you. So, Thomas and Kerry and Nicola and, uh, oh gosh, I can't even think, uh, Brett and St oh, Steve Dalton, especially. Uh, uh, if you're local, go and visit the Gold, uh, Gold Coast tech space. Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, people are speaking uh, after us, and yeah, we get a lot of support from LCA and LA. And, and also, um, we, uh, like everyone, I think we care, we care passionately about um, increasing the diversity. And there's, unfortunately, there's a lot of people like a little bit too much like me in the room. So I don't mean to insult anyone, <laughs> um, but uh, but no, we, we, we have we have we really appreciate um, the help of getting in uh, reaching out, and getting better diversity. And everyone who's who sponsored someone from diversity, we uh, had I think it was twelve or thirteen people um, who who paid extra to sponsor, and we had which meant there was six people today who we wouldn't otherwise have been able to attend uh, here. So thanks thanks very much. Yeah.